Okay, okay. I know I said that the last Saturday video I made was gonna be my last one, but that was before they released a five minute long trailer for it. And besides, y'all wanted this video, so here it is. So for this analysis, I'm only gonna talk about the notable things in this trailer that I personally find interesting or important to talk about, but trust me, there's still a lot to go over as they cover a lot of information. I'd recommend watching the trailer first before you watch this video as it may go out of order on some things for continuity's sake. I also wanna mention that I have not watched any early gameplay such as Dude's video purposefully to not spoil myself on the DLC. And if you're gonna talk about those videos in the comments, please try to keep spoilers to a minimum or at the very least, mark it in some way to let people know that it is a spoiler. But enough yap, let's hop right into it. So here at the start we get sort of a recap of what made up like 90% of the previous trailers with Pearl Drone, Agent 8, and the Spire of Order. Nothing too interesting, but this weapon animation is sick as hell. <laughs> After this intro, the narrator kicks in and starts describing a very loose outline for what we believe to be the story already. This narrator describes this place in a strange way, but I'll let you hear what she says before I give my thoughts. Welcome to Incopolis Square. This once thriving district now lies abandoned and has been drained of color. She makes it sound like this is THE Inkopolis Square, as in the real one, not some simulation or copy or something else. Which I feel like could be a mistranslation, because I don't know about y'all, but I've never been to a place where it started materializing itself out of binary in the real world. She also says that Pearl is now a drone, but we literally see her human form in the fresh season trailer, so I'm not too sure about that. NA translation has always had a history of being whack, but who am I to question the narrator, right? But this is something important to know. In this next scene, we see A and Pearlbot enter the Spire of Order through the front entrance. It seems like this outside area will serve the same purpose as the deep sea metro platform did in Octo Expansion, where you spoke to Tartar and also interacted with the vending machine and locker in the back area. I say this because we see a locker shaped thing on the right here, and we actually get a closer look at this from the short video on the Splatoon Latino America Twitter page. The quality is pretty bad, but from what I understand, you can use these keys which you get from within the Spire of Order to open these lockers to get items that can help you in runs. Maybe you can get some exclusive gear as well for multiplayer. If my math is correct, I counted 32 individual lockers on this big machine here. Like I said, I'm not sure if the items you get from this thing are supposed to be helpful, or even if the keys are obtainable only within the spire, but from what I see, this thing looks misplaced, like it isn't supposed to be there, but I don't really have much else to comment on about that. Another cool thing they show is this weapon select screen, which looks really clean, almost orderly. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all night. But it's worth noting that each weapon here has a symbol next to it. The Dooleys have Pearl, Brella has Marina, the Splattershot has a picture of what I believe to be the Cuddle Gear logo, and also Fry and DJ Octavio are on the Splatana and Splatling respectively. There are also three key icons on each of the weapons, with the Splattershot having two supposedly collected. Maybe this means you can only obtain three keys per weapon? In reality, I have no idea what they could represent though. If you have any idea on what they could be, do let me know in the comments below as I try to read all of them. Okay, wow. That was a lot of info, and we're only about a minute into the trailer, but let's keep rolling. Let's skip past all this filler footage here and take a look at the main point of this trailer, which is to show the gameplay loop of floor selection, color chip enhancement, and objective completion. From here on out, they talk about these in the order of them being mentioned. Starting with floor selection, from what I gather, every floor you reach has three levels of difficulty to choose from, with differing rewards based on difficulty. You can only move up one floor at a time and must complete the level to move up again. The number is hidden here, but it looks like it says 7F, indicating that the player is moving to the seventh floor. And counting the spaces between the octoling icon and this black glitchy orb, which I assume to be a boss, it looks like every 10 levels will have a boss or some sort of event slash task to do to keep moving up. Also, random detail, but it looks like Oct is the one who hits buttons for you. Maybe this area is also a place where you can speak with Oct to get some random lore bits and information? Here we can see three challenges ranging in difficulty. We can see an 8-ball level for easy, a fish icon for the normal level, and finally the icon that we saw in the last trailer which we now know is related to destroying enemy spawners is the hard level. It's also worth noting that the hard level has cracks in the box also, almost to indicate how hard it will be if you didn't already assume it would be difficult. Also the name for this currency here is Membucks, I'll talk about it later more, but it looks like you get more of it depending on the level you decided to play on. So that's something. In the next few shots, they show off some of the possible modes to play on, including destroying enemy spawn portals, chasing and defeating enemies, guiding an 8-ball, and covering an area like splat zones. We can also see that Oct will be speaking to us during some of the levels as indicated in this shot. So that section is probably the shortest of the three, but let's move to the color chip enhancement, and there's a lot to go over. They start by explaining how each level gives a color chip regardless of difficulty, but it seems the color chip given it is intended to be better depending on what level you take. It's also important to note that from this animation, it looks like you actually get the color chip before you actually start the level. In this shot, they show us a demonstration of the fire rate enhancement color chip, and let me just say, 
This is most definitely an enhancement. I mean, that fire rate is insane. It's literally like arrow spray fire rate on a splatter shot. It seems like they really wanted to make these enhancements really mean something and show a considerable change visually for the player, which I believe is a good move because Let's be real, no one wants boring upgrades. They also show a comparison of the damage output color chip. This hologram on the charger looks to appear when you have more main damage output color chips on as well, which is a cool visual to show progress within the player. There's this shot of a roller, but I don't really know what the enhancement here is, and also dualies doing multiple dodge rolls. This one is especially significant because it seems like there might be color chips exclusive to specific weapons, like for example a scope on a charger, or a quicker charge up time for a splat link charger or tri stringer. I also want to rewind a bit back to the charger and splatter shot clips looking at their background and especially the balloon thing that pops in the charger shot it seems this area is a training room meaning that possibly in the middle of your run you can practice and go to the training room to get a feel for certain enhancements or additionally this could just be a testing room that you can travel to between runs of the spire now i want you guys to listen to this next part over 60 types of color chips can be unlocked Use different combinations to customize your palette to your liking. There are over 60 unique color chips in this game. Like, bro, that is so many upgrades. But anyway, let's take a closer look at this chart. I counted 62 chips in total, and they seem to be broken up into different categories. Power, which handles main weapon stats. Support, which likely handles ink tank stats. Range, which handles, well range, likely for sub, main, and special weapons. Mobility, which is probably about your speed in both squid and human form. Lucky is something I actually would like to talk about later, so we'll skip it for now. And drone, which probably relates to anything that modifies the pro drone's base stats. There are lines connecting some of the chips together, but I don't know what this could indicate at all. At first I thought they related to how strong that ability will be, depending on how many of the same chip you have, but that doesn't seem to be right when looking at this image Splatoon North America posted on Twitter or X. In this image we can see what seems to be a sort of reference guide slash glossary for all the different color chips. It seems to show which ones you've obtained and also gives a bit of dialogue and information on them. The one the player has highlighted in the image is ink damage, which increases the damage dealt by you and Pearl Drone's weapons. There also seems to be some info given by Oct here on the color chip, but what piques my interest is the thing under it, set 3 in your palette to unlock. It seems by accumulating more of a color chip, you also get more dialogue about it from Oct or possibly another character too. It seems there are 3 color chip collection milestones per color chip, as there are 3 segments here on the right for text to be placed. There also seems to be 3 tick marks on top of the color chip itself, likely representing the progress on said milestones. These these milestones seem to debunk that theory I had earlier with the lines, so maybe they are just for aesthetic purposes. The next shot shows various builds a player could have, so there really isn't anything that we haven't already seen. We do see a lot of names for the color chip enhancements, but I'd like to mainly bring your attention to the Pearl Drones enhancements. And there are a lot of upgrades for the Pearl Drone. We can see splat bombs, ink mines, and a lot of other things. It also looks like I was right in my prediction that the Pearl Drone can use smaller versions of specials like the Killer Whale, as there seems to be this upgrade to Drone Gauge Charge, which I assume has to do with something special related as we can see a special gauge around the drone in the HUD later in the video. In the next few shots where they show off some more color chip enhancements, there's a few things to see. In the first shot we can see this tower control-esque pillar. It seems this will be one of the modes we can play on a floor. This one seems to revolve around a tower that must be inked to move forward. It looks like it fills with ink when hit, so it may even have a fuel meter where it can move on its own for a short while before needing a refill. This mode looks really interesting, so I'm really curious to see how it plays out when I finally get my hands on side order. On the top left we can see a bar that says chain. This is what I assume the word lucky chain refers to that we've seen earlier in the trailer. It must be important as there's a whole color chip category just for this. It looks like a sort of multiplier slash combo meter that's been commonplace in many other games. It looks to go up when enemies are slain and it maxes out at 10. I skipped over this earlier but in this scene here, judging from the color chip description, it looks like the lucky chain handles rewarding items to the player. So the higher your chain is, the more likely enemies are to drop items. It also looks like this chain can be upgraded heavily as the first upgrade takes takes you from a max of 10 to a max of 30. I'm sure this mechanic has a little more to it, but that's all we really know about it at this point. In the next few shots, they show off some more color chip abilities and upgrades, but there isn't anything significant to the last one, where we can see that Pearl drops an armor power up, which I assume relates to the drone item color chip we saw earlier. We can also see here the special gauge meter for this sprinkler looking thing that the Pearl drone can do as noted by the shimmering gauge. There's also this one with a question mark, which is odd, but I have nothing more to say on it really. I also want to point out a really cool feature I noticed in this scene. Take a close look at the type of color chip in Agent 8's palette as well as their ink color. That's right, the ink color of Agent 8 matches the color of your chips. So if you have a lot of pearl drone color chips which are a cyan color, your ink color will reflect that. Or if you have a lot of main power color chips, 
your ink color will be more red. This is such a perfect way to show the player visually their exponential increase in their strength and is really just generally a cool way to show differences between players' playstyles. The ink colors were already so nice looking in this DLC, but this makes it look like a thousand times cooler. It really does show the amount of time and care that's been placed into this DLC. Okay, moving on to the last section, objective completion, which we've already talked about loads from the previous clips, but there's still much to talk about. The first clip here shows a similar scene we have seen earlier in the trailer showing the movement between the levels, but there's additional information here on this one. Starting at the very bottom, we can see a picture of a pearl, which is a sort of prestige currency you get that can be used to upgrade your base character and your pearl drawn after completing a run. It seems that as you progress, there's a chance you can just get them for passing certain levels. This being predetermined or random is still up in the air though. We also see an icon of a key here, which matches the key icon used to unlock the locker we saw outside the Spire of Order. It looks like it's attached to this black orb here, which as I said earlier, I suspect to be a boss battle. It seems the reward for beating this level is a key. This key wasn't here on the previous footage of this glorified loading screen we saw earlier, meaning that these keys are also randomly placed like the pearls, but maybe they can only appear attached to these levels specifically. One more thing we see is this picture of what seems to be a vending machine. If I were to guess what its function was, I would assume it would be similar to how the rest areas acted in Trial of the Sword in Breath of the Wild's DLC. Obviously, a vending machine gives you something after you input currency into it, so maybe on that level where the icon appears, a vending machine could spawn at the entrance area before the actual level, where you can then use this memba currency to purchase items or things to assist you in a run. I'm not sure what it would dispense, but if it's displayed here on this loading screen, it must have significance. After the player moves up, we can see the floor introduction. We can see the floor we are now on, the name of the level we are playing, as well as its difficulty, and finally the amount of lives we have. I want you to especially note the name of the level and its difficulty. All the level names we have seen so far share a striking similarity to the naming conventions of file names. We can see underscores and dashes as well as a dot naming presumably the file extension, which is dot floor in this case. This seems to add on to the idea that side order takes place within a simulation or some sort of computer program, as why else would the levels be named this way? There clearly is a significance to this. And let's not forget about this difficulty marker above the name as well. If we refer back to a part of the trailer where we can see the difficulty options for each floor, we can see they are classified by easy, normal, and hard. But this level here has the difficulty rating of rigorous, which is kind of scary not gonna lie. It seems there could be a high possibility of even more difficult levels to play on past the hard difficulty, which is super exciting. It's also worth noting that the color scheme of this difficulty rating, marked by the purple hue of their star, is similar to the hue of the hard difficulty, so it also could just be a small inconsistency to bring more stress to the player. In this next scene, we can see Agent 8 entering the... <clears throat> unreasonable shelterless up and down floor. It looks like the entrance to this level has a similar makeup to Octo Expansion and Return of the Mammalians, having a small platform before the actual level for the player to exist on. This area is where I assume that the vending machine I mentioned earlier could spawn. We can also see a target dummy on the left, as well as the coolest weapon equip animation in the history of Splatoon. I'm telling you if they don't add these weapon equip animations as an entrance emote in multiplayer, I will be very upset. We can also literally see the level loading in before us from binary, which just adds more to the fact that we are in a simulation and not the real world. These next few scenes aren't that important, but two things to know is that some of these stages will actually have moving platforms. And on top of that, it seems squid rolls have the possibility to do damage to enemies, which is probably a color chip upgrade. Now this next scene is very important, so I'm gonna play it in full, before I actually talk about it. Fail to reach the top and you'll be forced to start over from the very beginning, regardless of your current floor. Additionally, you will forfeit all color chips obtained. However, they will be converted into a currency known as pearls. Use pearls to acquire permanent upgrades before your next run, such as having more lives, reducing damage received, and improving your base abilities. If you die at any point in your run, that's rough, buddy, because you're going to start all over again. But don't worry, all those color chips you've obtained will be forfeited and turned into pearls, which is that currency I spoke about before. And as I said earlier, it's used to upgrade your base character and your pearl drone, which we can see here. It doesn't look like there are many upgrades, but all of them are very meaningful for any future runs. We can see that Agent 8 has the ability to upgrade her max lives, damage reduction, armor, and broken armor jumps, as well as the ability to upgrade Pearlbot too. Those last two are especially interesting, as it looks like with max 
max upgrades, you can have four pieces of armor on at once, which is very interesting. As for the other one, it seems to imply that you're able to super jump from within the level. Or maybe more realistically, it could be referring to the limited jump ability you have when you are vulnerable. But I'm inclined to believe it's the former, judging from the icon. But I still don't really understand how this could be useful within play. For what reason would you even want to super jump in a level? Maybe you're able to super jump back to the starting platform to regroup and go back at it again, and this upgrade just increases that efficiency? There also seems to be another use for pearls. Again, from the Splatoon Latino America account, there seems to be a shop where you can use these pearls. This shop here seems to be solving a problem that could occur for late game side order players, as pearls are used to upgrade your base character. But those upgrades have limits, and what do you spend all those pearls on after that? On locker items, of course. It looks like this guy right here, who we finally know what his purpose is for, and it's definitely not a villain, is going to be running a shop where we can buy locker items like replicas of enemies and pancakes, apparently. It seems like this guy's name is displayed up here, but I unfortunately don't speak Japanese, so I don't have the faintest idea what his name could be. But if you do know, be sure to let us all know in the comments below. Looking at the background, we can actually pinpoint where he will be in the outside area too. Comparing the windows and the sign on the right here, we can actually find out that he will likely be setting up camp in this back alley where you used to enter the Octo Expansion DLC. I suspect he won't be here on your first run as he operates with a currency that you can only get after your first run ends, that being the pearls, but that's just my guess. Going back to the footage, I also want to note that the button to confirm an upgrade has the words get hacking, which after it is selected shows a stream of code behind a loading bar and with get this Marina's logo. This seems to confirm that she isn't the real villain of this DLC as she's actively helping us by upgrading our stats. But of course, this is assuming that this is actually her doing the hacking and not just some program Marina coded that someone else has picked up to use for our benefit. But with these octoling noises playing faintly in the background, having more lives, reducing damage received and improving your base abilities to give you which I have a feeling is definitely Marina speaking to us in some manner it could be that Marina is playing a sort of guy in a chair role with this DLC but that just feels like a little too shallow of a reason to why she isn't seen more in this trailer so there's likely something more to it looking at the borders as well we can more or less tell that this terminal or whatever you interact with to get this screen is outside of the spire this is a bit out of place but we also gain the name of the boss we saw in the shot earlier and in the poster that was posted on Splatoon NA's account. Apparently this boss is called the Pinging Marcial. It's an odd name, but it's definitely a name. <laughs> Maybe it has some hidden meaning to it. Another thing in the same scene I want to point out here is that we actually finally get a name for this currency we've seen for a while now, and they're called Membucks. The name Membucks are bordering on the line of being a homophone for the word Memcakes, which were the little reward you got for completing a level in Octo Expansion. Maybe this currency is used to unlock memories or something similar? There's obviously a reason why they're named this way, and I don't think it's a coincidence that they share a similar naming convention either. In this next scene, we can see four shields around Agent 8. This could be the max armor upgrade we saw earlier, but that doesn't make sense to me because we already have seen an armor power up earlier, and judging from its icon, it looks to be referring to the item and not the base Agent 8 herself. Although, it does look like she is wearing armor in this scene, judging from the band on her head. So it could be possible that the upgrade is referring to how many quote unquote hits the armor can handle before it shatters. And actually, in a later scene, we can see this is actually how it works because we can see the shields breaking on Agent 8. And that's all the categories they talked about. Floor selection, color chip, enhancement, and objective completion. There's just a few more things left in the video to talk about, and then after, I'll tie up any loose ends and other things I want to talk about before ending the video. I've probably already dragged on for a while now, so I'll try and keep it quick, but no promises. In this shot here, we can see an ink refill, so that probably means it's a drop from these enemies. So... Yeah, nothing much to say there. Right after that, we get a few shots from what I can only assume to be the story beats and cutscenes. In this first one, we see a massive explosion that emanates from the side of the spire. It looks like something exploded and produced a lot of smoke. Not much to say here. In the next scene, we can see what seems to be a reaction to that explosion from Pearl and Ape, but it doesn't seem to be like that, as the explosion took place outside and this scene takes place inside. I assume this is an introduction to some character or boss of some sort. I tried to look in the reflection of Probot's lenses to see if I could see what they were looking at, but I couldn't make anything out. If I were to take a shot in the dark, I would say it's this dude, but I'll talk about him in a moment. This next scene is a pretty generic level with enemies, but we do get a look at the 8-ball platform thing here, as well as gameplay for this flatline. But the more important thing here is we get a clear view of the starting platform you initially spawn at, as indicated by the elevator and the placement of the target dummy. We can also see a hole in the floor for what seems to be where the lift spawns that we see drops Agent 8 above a level in the Fresh Season trailer. After this, we get a look at gameplay of the Octobrush or Ink Brush weapon, as well as this massive room with giant metal fans in it. It definitely has a more interesting vibe to the rest of the rooms we've seen so far. We also see a hologram of what looks to be an ocean sunfish, which is a fish from real life. 
I don't really think this has any significance, but I thought it was cool to point out. This next scene shows this red corruption overtaking the Spire of Order, which I believe to be linked to this guy again, but I'll talk about him real soon. We also see another shocked probot, but again, I can't make out what she's looking at. In this shot, we can see a dark level, which is super cool to see. I really do hope we get more unique gimmicks like this, as it's going to add a lot of replayability to the levels. We see this large room with stairs in the background after that, but nothing else to note. And finally, we get to this guy right here. Now, I'm not sure what it is, but it's definitely not human. It emanates a glitchy aura and has a piercing smiling gaze. It's kind of off-putting, honestly. This thing is what I believe to be the thing that Agent A and Probot are looking at in the previous scene. And although this is the first time we've seen this thing on its own, we may have seen various hints to it previously in the past shots. In many scenes, we can see this red corruption on certain objects within the backgrounds of the level. Almost like this red stuff is destroying it somehow. We also saw that shot of the Spire of Order being engulfed within this evil corruption as well. And although it may be a reach, it's worth noting that the eyes of essentially all the enemies share this red color. Possibly indicating that this thing has overridden these fish's primary directives and has changed them to target A on site. All of this leads me to believe that this dude is going to be the real main antagonist of the story, and the way he appears here kind of makes me think he might appear before every major fight or level that has this black orb on it, but that's just a hunch. I'll definitely talk more about my thoughts on him when I try to piece together what I believe to be the general story outline later in the video. Okay, cool random scene of a splashdown, and well, it looks like I was right about this thing being a boss, and it definitely looks to be quite different and more difficult compared to the ones we've already seen previously in other Splatoon story modes. It looks like the way this boss is structured to be fought is by attacking these black growths on the side of these rings. After defeating all these points on a ring, it destroys it, causing the boss to drop, and the process repeats until it's at its last layer. I counted six layers here, but the actual boss fight could have more or less layers before it's actually defeated. It also seems to spew enemies and even shoot an ink strike at you, which Agent 8 promptly dodges. I've seen some people call this boss generic, but I have to wholeheartedly disagree. If Nintendo plays their cards right, Sidewarder's bosses could be the most unique ones we've seen yet, and judging from the two we've seen already, it does seem like this is the case. And that's the trailer. Quite a bit to talk about, huh? But don't leave yet, there's still a few things I want to talk about that I have either not already talked about, or it's information that recently came out and I'm just too lazy to add it onto the script, so I'm packing it on at the end. I'm a great YouTuber guys, trust. I first want to note in the backgrounds of many of these levels, we can see boxes that contain various objects. I'm not sure how much of this is related to anything really, but it feels like a large majority of these boxes contain children toys. And I'm not sure what it could mean, but I wanted to mention it just so it's out there. A few days ago, Splatoon North America actually dropped the name of the enemies we've seen throughout this trailer that Agent 8 has been absolutely destroying. They're called Gelatins, which is quite an interesting name, but I guess it does fit with what they are, as they quite literally are fish skeletons held together with what I now assume to be jelly. Their behavior is kind of a mix between Salmonoid and Octo enemies, and they share conventions from both, but they also have a few unique qualities about them, such as their obvious strikingly cool design, along with the fact that you can use the bones of their fallen soldiers to take out even more of them, which is pretty metal. As far as I know, I've only seen two cases of this in the trailer. At about two minutes into the trailer, we can see this crab-like enemy, and it seems like when they're defeated, they drop one of their bones that resembles a spinning top that can be shot at other gelatins, similar to how Rolonium works in the story modes it's been featured in. Another time I see a bone being dropped by an enemy is near the end of the trailer, where we can see the spring-like dude drop a spring here after its death. We don't actually see 8 use this one, but I feel like it'd be safe to assume that the spring-like bone would act like a spring, meaning if Agent 8 jumps on it, it could have a possibility of launching her into the air to possibly use the Pearl Drone again to glide to another area. These enemies are a real breath of fresh air to the game because at this point, I think like everyone is sick of the generic reskins of the base Octo Troop enemies we've seen throughout the story modes, even if they did sort of fit with those modes. I'm a big fan of their visuals and I'm sure they'll be really fun to fight as it seems like there's many different types. I personally am a big fan of Small Fry 2.0. I additionally want to take the time to praise the developers of Side Order on the immaculate UI and environmental design. It seems like this vision was clearly set in stone at the start and I really feel like they nailed the look of this DLC. I don't have a lot of experience in making games, but I know making games is really hard, so it's just really impressive how good this DLC looks. I'm really glad that they're also taking a real not so beginner friendly approach to this DLC. And I mean, yeah, Octo Expansion had its difficult moments, but it's nothing when looking at this difficulty ceiling of side order, at least from what I've seen. I feel like quote unquote,
quote-unquote difficult Splatoon is the sort of area Nintendo should really play with more, because the added extra challenge I feel could really bring a lot of new and old players back to the game, much like how Side Order most definitely will upon its release. I think it's important to note as well that we still have not seen actual confirmation of Agent 4 being in Side Order. As far as I could tell, I didn't see a single reference to her in this trailer, and I feel like a lot of people have been speaking about her like she's confirmed to be in this DLC, but that simply just isn't the case right now, or at the very least at the time of recording this. And with all this new information, I think I can piece together what the story of Side Order may be. It seems like after the Chaos vs. Order Splatfest, Marina started working on a world of order within a computer program. I'm not sure what the reason could be, but judging from her past history, it could be a program built to train agents or inklings and octolings to become better at combat. She invites Agent 8, Pearl, and Oct to take a look at it as they're close friends of hers. Somehow or some way, a rogue virus takes over the program. Maybe this is an AI intended to oversee functions that went out of control within her program, or it could be just an actual computer virus that worked its way in from who knows what. It could be an old human thing, or maybe it's even a remnant of Tartar. Anyway, this leads Marina, Oct, and 8 to be sucked into the program, leaving Pearl to chase after them through a bot inserted into the program that she can communicate through. This then leads to 8 being placed out of the spire and meeting Pearlbot. They all then team up to try and find Marina by scaling the tower, where I assume presumably she's captured captured by this virus at the very top. She can still help in some ways through her hacks, but needs actual physical extraction to get rid of the virus, which leads Agent A and Pearlbot to fight their way to the top of the spire and deal with this virus in Free Marina. Now, there's obviously a lot of holes and leads that don't add up in this prediction, such as when and where this dude comes into the picture, as well as where Agent 4 fits in if she even is in this DLC, but I'm semi-confident that the major story beats I spoke about are probably there in some way. Marina coding the program, her being captured, 8 having to free her, and a virus trying to tear it all down. It's obviously all just speculation, but that's the fun of it, right? Either way, I think I've finally exhausted everything I wanted to say about this trailer. This video has probably dragged on for like a while now, so I'm gonna stop it here before I yap for another hour. I'm really excited for the fresh season and all the new exciting stuff coming. Like the new Salmon Run map and Dooley's look pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but let's be real, I'm only attending the function for side order, bro. <laughs> I'll be sure to add anything else I find interesting in the pinned comment below the video. And if you've made it this far, I'd really appreciate you dropping a like and a subscribe as I'll be playing through the entirety of the side order DLC right here. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, this will definitely be the last long form side order video that I have before it's released. So excuse me while I go into hibernation for the next few days while I wait for side order to drop and yeah see you guys